I'll be your Huckleberry. <laughs> The Magnificent Seven, released in 1960 and is directed by John Sturgis. He was also directed such films like Ice Station Zebra, Bad Day at the Black Rock, Gunfight at the OK Corral, and The Great Escape. And this film is starring the very cool Yul Brenner, Eli Wallach, Steve McQueen, Charles Bronson, Robert Vaughn, Brad Dexter, Horst Buchholz, and James Coburn. The film is an adaptation of the master filmmaker Kurokawa. The film is an adaptation of the master filmmaker Akira Kira Kurosawa's masterpiece of a film, Seven Samurai. In this adaptation, it is placed in the Old West. A small Mexican village and its occupants are being terrorized by a group of bandits led by Ugly from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And in an attempt to stand up to these bandits, the village people hire seven guns for hire. Seven quick gun-slinging renegades, who are A, very broke and need some cash, two, are easily persuaded, or three, just have nothing better to do. Sacrifices are made, uprisings are created, and the battle of good versus evil rages on. The plot, the story, the essence here is very simple. Again, it's good versus evil. We have the peaceful villagers who just want to farm and live out their lives in peace and in harmony. And then we have a group of bandits who come in and don't want to put forth the hard work of farming and creating a living for themselves. They just want to take from those who do work hard, namely food and supplies. And the village call out for help and they get basically a a western style justice league seven outlaws who really don't have a trade other than their guns for hire they're all potential bodyguards that are quick gun slinging folk sometimes knives but they're willing to stand up against injustice and to put lawbreakers and evildoers six feet under now if you're going to make a comparison between the magnificent seven and the kurosawa masterpiece seven samurai you give it to Seven Samurai. Again, it was the original story and film that really all of this stuff is based on, but it's also done so beautifully. My wife got me the Criterion version of Seven Samurai a couple of years ago for Christmas. It's one of the best things she's ever given to me, you know, other than her, her love and, and promise of marriage. It's like a, like a close third or fourth. But shame on me, I watched that film after watching this one. I watched Magnificent Seven a couple of years before actually seeing the original, so my attachment to this story of outlaws coming in to save a village and to sacrifice the majority of the Seven, I attribute more to this movie than I do to that one, even though the Japanese film is more beautifully made than this one. I'm always scared when we get to these classic Western films of ADR. I reviewed The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly a couple of years ago, and I was raked over the coals and crucified for my criticism of the terrible ADR that that film had, so I was apprehensive. I couldn't remember if it was terrible in this film. It's actually not. Everything is, all the sound, the sound design is actually pretty impressive. There are a couple of questionable ricochet shots in here that I go, that sounds more like a stormtrooper laser blast than an actual six barrel revolver. I mean, I guess I, I really don't know. I've never shot one or been around one that's been shot, so... Maybe it does sound like that. I don't I don't care to find out. But it's all just a classic hero's tale. This small group of guys who do have the abilities and the capability of standing up to evil and to rescuing someone. They actually put forth their efforts and actually use their gifts for good as opposed to just kind of sitting back and putting their hat down and sleeping their, their days away. I think there's a line about that somewhere in like a comic book or something. I, I don't know. Remember, Peter, with great power, comes great responsibility. Excelsior! Oh yeah, that's right. That Spider-Man line that no film studio wants Spider-Man to say anymore in the last 10 years. That's not just with great power comes great responsibility here. It's really with great power comes great responsibility and great aspiration because it's not just about them using their gifts to save these people. It's about inspiring these villagers to actually take a stand against tyranny and take a stand against oppression. At some point, these bandits declared themselves rulers over this village. There's no claim. There's nothing in any laws that state that that 
that's an actual fact. It's just a complacent truth that they've lived with for several years. But with the seven, they inspired them to know this is our village, this is our food, this is our hard work. If you want to share a bit, you need to put forth the effort and we'll work with you. But if you're not willing to do that, we will resist and we will fight you. It's what makes this whole story timeless. This is why this film was remade in 2016 with a more contemporary actor base. Now that I'm thinking about it, it was converted to a Disney animation with Pixar, A Bug's Life. A Bug's Life is the Magnificent Seven. Oh my god! Seriously, I just made that comparison, and that is awesome. A Bug's Life is so cool. Again, Seven Samurai, this original story, timeless. Not just with one culture, but with all peoples everywhere. We get a who's who of actors with this rendition of Magnificent Seven. Yul Brenner, who is one of my favorite, like, classic actors from the 50s and 60s. I know him mostly as Ramses from the Ten Commandments. So let it be written. So let it be done. He was also in The King and I. I don't think he's ever not been bald, but whenever he's on screen, I just look at him and I go, you are so damn cool. I'm not sure how you're wearing all black in the desert, in the Old West, and not roasting to death, but you're not. And that makes you so cool. We got Steve McQueen, who also worked with this director in The Great Escape. Again, a very cool actor here as well. I guess there are stories of a little, uh, a diva-ish competition between Steve McQueen and Yul Brenner. Yul Brenner was slightly taller, and there are stories of Steve McQueen kind of building up sand around them while they're waiting for the take and then standing up on it so he appears taller in some scenes. Or trying to upstage him by like flipping coins or shaking his shotgun shells in the background while Yul Brenner is delivering a speech. Kind of catty shit like that. Charles Bronson is also here. He's another famous Western actor, Once Upon a Time in the West actually. He plays that kind of father figure to some of the boys in the village. And he has a great monologue here where the boys are saying, God, I, I wish you were our father. Our fathers are cowards. And after very awkwardly bending that kid over and spanking him. <laughs> Such a weird scene. He tells them that, no, your dads are not cowards because they won't pick up guns. You know what they're carrying? They're carrying around responsibility to you and to this village. Carrying a gun doesn't make you brave. Bearing responsibility, that's what makes you brave. I love that speech. Could we, like, use that in today's climate with the whole gun issue? Can we just put that out there for everyone to hear? Please, I'm begging you. I think the film is a solid adaptation from the original work. We all like hearing these stories of the underdog rising up against those that appear more dominant, but with the morality tale that in the end, good usually almost always prevails. I'm gonna give The Magnificent Seven four out of five Blu-rays. I like it a lot. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part of my videos, where I pick which movie I'm going to be watching next. And the next one comes, it's another recommendation from Mr. and Mrs. Rusted Beetle. It's a PayPal donation that they sent me, so I'm, I have to do it, and I have to get it out as quickly as I possibly can. It's actually a sequel called Paddington 2, supposedly a nice holiday flick. I don't know, I haven't seen it, but I do own it. But I feel like I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't watch the first Paddington, which I have not watched, so... I should probably check that one out first and then review Paddington 2. If I was going to be a good, like, reviewer. Right? So we'll check out Paddington 2 next time. Hey, if any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, leave a comment below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter. Leave your recommendation there. If I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and give you a shout on the channel. And if you really want me to do your recommendation as quickly as I possibly can, bypass the whole random generator list that I have of all the recommendations that I've received, and there are a ton of them, you can make a PayPal donation by clicking on the donate button on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do. Just attach your movie with your donation, and if I have access to it, I will watch it and get my review of it published as quickly as I possibly can get it published. So guys, have you seen The Magnificent Seven? What did you think about it? Where does it rank if you are a Western fan? Where does it rank on your greatest Westerns of all time list? Whatever you thought, come up below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I'm releasing my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of Paddington 2. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.